Do you have the God to practice forgiveness? Yes, I had to. 2008 was one of my very important years. My mom saved up enough money to send me study abroad in the Western. As a student in the Netherlands, I learned a totally new life. I even forgot that I come here for my education. I just go to work and enjoy my young life. It's 2010, I come back to Vietnam. I'm very happy. I hug and kiss my mom, but I stay unhappy. I feel bad because I skip school and throw away my money. As we say goodbye at the airport, I see tears drop from my mom. At that moment, I decide to change. Back to the Netherlands, I moved my education to Saxon University. I take my studies seriously. After six months, I lost 10 kilo of body fat and I gained seven kilo of muscle. I think, I feel extremely happy and my mind is very sharp. I'm doing very well at school and everything seemed to turn in a very positive way. Did you ever have a time in your life that life seemed to smile at you? Two years after, I hear bam, bam. I look at my alarm clock and it's 7 a.m. in the morning. Who can that be? It's the FBI with a shirt warrant. I feel like I'm in the wrong movie. They separate me and my housemate and they ask questions. Do you have weapon? Do you have drugs? Do you have big amount of money in your house? After two weeks, exactly on the day that I have to move to Amsterdam for my education, for my internship. At 5 a.m., I hear again, bam, bam, in the front door. Flashlight through the window. I open the door, and there's three policemen ask me if I'm Lee Vu, because they have an arrest warrant on my name. Arrive at the police stations, I'm very shocked. They explained for me about the arrest for an extradition to the USA. At that moment, I'm very upset. After hour traveling place to place, seeing someone with a handcuff, I'm very confused. And finally, I can ask, sir, excuse me. Can you tell me why am I at? I got a shocking answer. In jail, sir. Swear to God, at that time I don't even know the word jail. They asked me if I have a lawyer, and I don't. So they arranged me a lawyer from the government. Things getting worse and worse. They decided to extend my stay in jail for another 60 days. for further investigations. Even the weather turned bad, it started raining, just like in a movie. Everything looks so sad. It's the first and the only time tear dropped from my eyes. I never imagined in my life that I would be in jail for such a long time. 
After three weeks, I get out of jail with a very strict house arrest conditions. I have a big bracelet on my left ankle and restricts to stay in the house. I have to show up in the police station twice a week and only can get out of the house two hours per day. It sounds very bad, but I'm feeling very grateful because at least I don't lose my freedom completely. For two years, I fired the extraditions in the Netherlands. I've been in and out of the prison for three times. My lawyer, Bart Stappert, is my hero. He get me out of the prison all the time, so I have the chance to come back and do my education as my internship. 2014 came with a very bad news. The US government decides to appeal the decisions of the court in Den Haag. And this time I have to fight. But I lost. So they shipped me to the US. March 2014, I come back to prison. A news journalist gave me the book named The Secret of Life after our last interview. And I think that I learned the secret of life inside the cell before they shipped me to the US. After three days, I see the US muscle for the first time. And for the first time in my life, I get handcuffed. I do understand that's the policy, but I still feel very weird. Landing in the US, I immediately feel the pollution air. It's the thick air, and it's totally different with the fresh and nice air we have here in the Netherlands. I arrived Robert A. Dayton's detention facility around 2 a.m. in the morning. Food in the U.S. prison is very bad. All processed food. But I'm grateful for that by practicing the book, The Secret of Life. Because I still have food to eat, water to drink, air to breathe. And the most important, I'm still alive. After what, they sent me to the general population. Right there, I meet my first life teacher, Mr. Eugene Chang. The only Koreans in the whole prison. With his 40 years of wisdom, I talk and learn from him every night. I learn about life, I learn about prison rules, and I learned about so many things that helped me to survive in prison. Sometimes I think that I'm lucky that I lock up. Because when I'm inside, I have so much time to study things in life. One day, after the basketball match, I sit down and talk with a Puerto Rican kid. It is weird when you sit down with other race and have a long conversations, because it's one of the most unwanted things to see in prisons. He opened himself to me, and he tell me why he get locked up, which is, I'm robbery. Yes, a young kid, I'm robbery. He about 16 years old. And he tell me that his parents is a crackhead couple. They used to smoke crack in front of him and his younger brother since they was very young. Right there, I understand the meaning of put yourself in other people's shoes. I slowed down a lot, 
I talk and learn about people background. Imagine if was if we was born and grow up in that environment, we we better than him. Can we not do arm robbery? I spent 18 months at that prison. And then they shipped me to another prison. The new prison is pretty nice and lovely. Yes, <laughs> because I received better food and a better facility. I spent three months over there to finish my sentence. Now they ship me to the immigration detention. The new prison is very bad compared to the last one, but it's still better than the first one. And I'm so happy I counting every day because the day that I'm seeing my family is coming. But you know what? In the, at the same time, I'm so confused because it looks like the immigration officer is playing with Asian people. On other race, they come back after the maximum of two months. And I'm waiting here for five months now. So I decide to go for a hunger strike. The police isolate me in an isolation room. I don't eat for almost a week, and I lost seven kilo. Now they start my paperwork. Finally, I go back to Vietnam. On the day that I step my foot on the airplane, I feel very, very happy. And there's no word in the war can describe how happy I am at that moment. I thought we just have to follow our plan. But I saw that in life, we cannot really plan everything ahead and expect everything will happen in our favor. To stay mentally healthy, I managed to read books, keeping my diet, and work out a lot during those two and a half years behind bar. I adjust my mental not to think about my plan that I have before. Instead, I adapt myself to the new environment. I believe in planning and adjust your current situation to get the most out of it. Of course, people plan things, but when things not happen in the way you love, don't be confused. Just adapt it, and you will figure out how much more amazing you are with a new plan. Every day, I lock myself in the cell in prisons for at least half hour for meditations. I love it. That half hour of sessions help me to go through a lot of stress and go through all the best things behind the bar. In meditation, it teach you to forgive. You will have to forgive your enemy. You will have to forgive the people who hurt you. And even you have to love them. People do things just to protect their own self. We practice forgiveness to develop 
our compassions and become more of a human. Those people who did bad things to you just because they don't understand the beauty of compassion and the beauty of a peaceful mind. Forgive people. Love them. And even educate them about forgiveness. That's why everyone we can live in a loved world. Right? Yeah. <laughs>